Hello booktube, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. These are the books that I've been reading this week. So I'll start with the comic book. I got uh, Persepolis, is that how you pronounce it? Persepolis, Persepolis, uh, out of my school library. And uh, it's a small volume. So I got it out this week uh, on Monday, and I actually just finished it up uh, just now, actually, uh, just before filming this video. Um, so I will hopefully have time to film a review of this tomorrow. Uh, th th that's the plan. I, I usually like to film uh, the reviews uh, the same day I finish a book or the day after at most. Uh, otherwise, I'll start accumulating a backlog. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you what. Why don't I just hold off all my thoughts for the review when I film that tomorrow? So uh, that's the comic book reading to, for this week. I also uh, have another comic book on my shelf. This one is called Finn Origin, and it's something I know absolutely nothing about, but a coworker asked me if I wanted to borrow it, and I said, yeah, why not? I mean, if, if it was a, I'm a slow reader, so if it was like a, a, a normal novel or something, I'd say, no, you know, my dance card is full for the next few months. I've got tons of books I, I'm meaning to read, but uh, a comic book uh, I can finish off uh, in a week or two. So, uh, I'm, yeah, uh, it's something I know nothing about uh, other than uh, this is uh, uh, apparently by the same people who published Judge Dredd. Uh, co-worker happened to be Scottish, uh, so this is perhaps more famous in the UK than in the US. Uh, I don't know. I, I know absolutely nothing about this. I, I saw the Judge Dredd movie, the Sylvester Stallone one, uh, and I'm vaguely aware via some of my UK friends that the Judge Dredd uh, comic books are more famous in the UK, but that's, that's as much as I know. But anyways, uh, this is on my shelves for now, and then I think as soon as I finish reviewing Persepolis, I'll go to this one next. Uh, in terms of the Bible, I finished the book of Joshua, and I tried to review it this week. Uh, yeah, if, if you saw my review, I, I'm sorry about that. Uh, like I said earlier in this video, my current policy is when I finish something, I try and review it the same day or at most one day later. That caused uh, a, a little bit of a kink in my system because I finished the book of Joshua right before I had a couple of very early mornings uh, and full days of work, uh, a couple of work heavy days. Now usually I try and film these videos after the kids had gone to bed, but in, in this case that wasn't possible because I needed to go to bed early myself. So uh, the kids had a friend over and they were entertaining their friend. I thought maybe they were going to be distracted. And I tried to film the video. Unfortunately, the apartment we're living in, my door doesn't lock. The, the, the door to this bedroom, which is how I wish that door locked, but it doesn't. So when the kids came in and decided they wanted to jump on the bed, uh, there was nothing I could do until my wife came in and got them out. And then they came back in again and she got them out again. And it was really... Not ideal circumstances under which to film a video, but um, I, I decided to just keep rolling anyways. Um, I, I yeah, thought about stopping and trying to start again sometime later and then editing the two pieces together, but I don't like using the editing equipment if I don't have to. It, it, it takes forever, and yeah. so apologies for that. Tr truth be told, I think even before the kids came in and started jumping on the bed. Uh, there were a number of slips I made in that review. There, there were points I made, I intended to make, that I had set up, but then I, I don't think I had brought those points to their logical conclusion. Uh, I had talked about, for example, the theological problems with the conquest of Canaan and, and uh, the, you know, the bloody business that it was, but then I, I never really went anywhere with that. I mean, to a certain extent, there's nowhere to go. It's just a, it's just a problem. What, what are you going to do? 
But I, I had intended to say something uh, about how, like, Peter ends in his book, The Bible Tells Me So, does a good job of enumerating the various uh, Christian explanations that have been given for why the conquest of Canaan was necessary, and also giving rebuttals to each of them. Uh, and maybe talking about some of the explanations I had heard in my Sunday school uh, days over the years. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mentioned I mentioned that it was a question that we always had in Sunday school or, or Bible school, uh, but I didn't mention the, the explanations that the teachers frequently gave us to the conquest of Canaan, because we, we did get the, 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 the usual explanations for why God had to do it. So, and so uh, that one I can't even blame on the kids. That's just a consequence of doing these unscripted. Um, but I, I, again, the, the, the current philosophy I have right now is that if I was going to script all my reviews, then I wouldn't have time to review everything I read. And right now, the, the way I'd like to run this channel is just to try and do a review of everything I read, try and fit in the time somewhere. Anyways, anyways, enough apologizing for my review of Joshua. Uh, I've now gotten into Judges. I'm up to Judges 9. Uh, or sorry, just finishing off Judges 8, uh, which is Gideon and then his son uh, Abimelech. So uh, Judges is a very interesting book to read. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but uh, I, I think it's going to stay interesting all the way to the end. So, uh, you know, Exodus, Exodus had a lot of uh, descriptions of uh, what the tabernacle looked like, and that got very boring. Leviticus had a bunch of laws. Numbers had a bunch of laws. Deuteronomy had a bunch of laws. Joshua, I thought was going to be more interesting than it was, but I forgot that the second half of Joshua is just a geography lesson, and that was quite boring. But Judges is all narrative, and it's... it's, it's, it's uh, a whole bunch of interesting little folk tales that uh, have been put together in, into uh, the polemic of the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomistic historian. Uh, so it, it's interesting to read, although I had forgotten how... How do, how do I want to say this? I've forgotten how uh, bizarre the biblical narrative is. So, like, uh, when you hear these stories in Sunday school uh, or, like, in a, a children's Bible book or something like that, they, they, they will often add in uh, explanations to, to make sense of the narrative. But if you, if, you read the, uh, if you read it, the original right in the Bible, the, the, there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't make sense and isn't given any explanation. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm having flashbacks now to when I was uh, first starting to read the Bible and was was dismayed to find how much more difficult it was to read than the Sunday school stories I had grown up with back when I was a kid. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I am glad I'm reading the book of Judges. It's much more readable than a number of the books of the Bible I've, I've come across so far. Okay, and then the Tides of War, the historical novel about the Peloponnesian War. So I read uh, about 100 pages this week. Uh, so from page 142 to page 244. Did not make my goal of uh, 200 pages um, this week, but it sure felt like I was spending a lot of time with this book. So the, the section in those 100 pages is the Sicilian expedition when Athens tries to conquer Sicily. And it's something I uh, know about because uh, it was in the Peloponnesian War by Donald Kagan. And I read his, what was that? I read his account of it last year uh, and remember at least some of it. It's a little bit faded in the memory, but remember some of it. Uh, it, it's uh, a military quagmire slash disaster for Athens. Uh, and it was somewhat depressing to read when I was reading just the historical account of it in Donald Kagan's uh, book. I mean, it, at least if, if you're sympathizing with Athens, because it's, uh, 
It's a long, slow descent into uh, a deeper and deeper quagmire and then disaster. Um, but in this book, Stephen Pressfield makes it even more depressing. Uh, so he, he, he really brings home just how much these soldiers were suffering. Um, and of all the theaters of the Penelope Peloponnesian War that we could be focusing on, this seemed like the most depressing. So the, the novel is uh, supposedly about Alcibiades, who was off in Sparta during this time, uh, having an affair with the king of Sparta's wife. And I thought, oh, why couldn't we be going over there and focusing on the more soap opery aspects of this history? Why do we have to be doing the depressing military quagmire? Stephen Pressfield um, loves writing battle scenes, and there are a number of battle scenes within these pages, of which I had trouble following him exactly, but I definitely got the general tenor of what he was trying to describe. So, the, the, for example, there, there was a lot of talking about the, the fighting on the ships, and I couldn't visualize exactly what he wanted to describe to me, but I did get a, a general feeling of the ebb and flow of the battle. Uh, and it was gripping stuff, even though I wasn't able to follow it exactly. Uh, the parts I was able to follow were, were gripping, and I certainly got a, a sense of the momentum from reading it. Um, but it was not glorifying the battle. You got a sense of the horror of what it must be like to, to fight in those close quarters. Uh, and then that's not even getting into the, 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 the long slow decline of the Athenian army and the starvation and the wounded and the being thirsty and being captured and put in the rock mines uh, and being tortured after they get captured. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah uh, I, you know, in, in a way, it kind of serves me right, because I should not have expected uh, a novel about the Penelope, Peloponnesian War to be a fun book to read. The Penelope, Peloponnesian War is infamously one of the, the more brutal wars in history. And yet, uh, I often think to myself, historical novels are kind of a, a fun way to read history, a light way to read history. Um, and yet, I'm, I'm finding that this is more depressing uh, th than when I was reading the actual history book. Um, but we, we are out of Sicily now, and we are following Alcibiades uh, in Sparta. Um, the part where he was in Persia kind of got glossed over. He's coming back to Athens now. So the, there's some interesting stuff going on again now. Uh, I think I'm glad I'm reading this on the whole. Uh, we'll, we'll see how this comes out at the end. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's... There have been times this week where I, I thought, you know, because I'm busy with work and kids and three jobs and, and busy doing all this other stuff. And there have been times I thought, why, why am I spending my spare time, what little that I have, getting depressed by this book? Why, why aren't I reading some like fun, light comedy to fill my spare hours with? There have been times when I thought that during this, this past week. But uh, on the whole, I think I'm glad I'm, I'm reading this. Uh, and it looks like it could possibly go some interesting places before I'm finished with it. So we'll, we'll see. So yeah, that, that's my reading for this week. Uh, thank you very much, Booktube, and I will see you again next week. Oh, and um, I mean, pro probably do a, a review of Persopolis uh, tomorrow, uh, if I, if I, unless something goes wrong. <laughs>